In this case on training video, we'll go over how to change the weight settings on your Viber screen separator, as well as how to reassemble the unit. Before you do anything, it's very important that you lock out the power to the unit. Right here we have our top weight plates. The top weight setting controls the horizontal amplitude of vibration. In other words, the more weight plates you have on top of the motor, the quicker the material moves from the center to the outside of the screen. These weight plates can be removed individually so that you can fine tune the horizontal amplitude setting. Again, the more plates you have, the quicker the material moves from the center to the outside of the screen. Once you're done fine tuning your top weight settings, it's important to tighten the nut on the top with a wrench. I'm going to do it hand tight for demonstration purposes. Now we're going to move on to the two settings you can make in the base of your fiber screen separator. First, we release the safety switch key so that the unit cannot be in operation while the base door is open. Once the door is open, we can see our bottom weight eccentric. The first setting we're going to go into is our bottom weight plates. The bottom weight plates control the vertical amplitude of vibration. In other words, how much bounce the unit has. Again, the more weight plates you have on the bottom of the motor, the more bounce the unit will have. And these can be changed individually as well. On this particular unit, it looks like four of these weight plates are stuck together. Once you're done fine-tuning your bottom weight setting, it's important to once again tighten the nut with a wrench. Remember, the more weights on the bottom, the more bounce the unit has. Another setting we're going to take a look at is the lead angle setting. The lead angle is literally the angle between the top and bottom weight plates. The lead angle controls the path the material takes from the center to the outside of the screen. You can see on that red piece of the eccentric there's a gap. That gap serves as an indicator line for this scale that tells you the lead angle. To change the lead angle setting, you just need to loosen the set screw on the side and also loosen the nut next to it. Once you do this, the bottom weight eccentric can be rotated. As you can see right now, the, weight, the lead angle setting is about 60 degrees. Once I move that, now it's about 30 degrees. Here's an example of some of the paths that the lead angle can determine for your material just to give you a basic idea. Once you're done changing your lead angle settings, once again, tighten this set screw and tighten this nut with a wrench. Then we're ready to close up the base access door, secure it with the bolt, and refasten the safety switch key. Now we're going to show how to put the frames on. First you need to put this filler ring with gasket. It's important that the gasket is in place before you place this discharge frame there. Once the discharge frame and filler ring are in place, it's important that you use a standard clamp ring, not one of our quick acting clamp rings. It has to be our standard clamp ring on the bottom frame to secure that discharge frame. Very simply put the clamp ring around the unit, place the bolt through and tighten the nut. Again, this should be do uh, done with a wrench, preferably a ratchet wrench. That makes things a lot quicker than a standard wrench.
In this particular unit, we're going to put our clean screen ring assembly. Clean screen ring assembly is used to keep the screen clean by having these plastic rings shown bounce up against the bottom of the screen. We'll just put that on there, put that supported plate, and then put those rings. Then we're ready to put our screen in place. The screen should sit over the clean screen rings so that it's flush with that perforated plate. Next we're ready to put our spacing frame. After that, the next step is to tighten the clamp ring. It's important that you always tighten the clamp ring before tightening the center of the screen. Doing the opposite can lead to screen breakage. On this particular deck, we have one of our quick acting clamp rings to make things a little quicker. After that, we're going to place a gasket on the center post and then a washer. And when we start tightening it down, we're just going to place our hand on the screen and press down lightly. Just like so. Now we'll tighten down that nut up to where the plate is. And give it about a quarter turn more. You don't want to torque down the screen too tightly. We're going to add a second nut to make sure the screen is securely in place. And there you have it, your vibrating separator completely reassembled.